Okay, so we need to <coughs> find the, <coughs> the net force on this current loop due to the wire. Well, the uh, the wire here has a magnetic field due to the right-hand curl rule that on this side the magnetic field is into the page, and over on this side the magnetic field is out of the page. Right? So this loop is immersed in a magnetic field that is directed out of the page. That's our external field. But it's not uniform. Right? It varies. So let's, con <coughs> let's consider the forces acting on each of these wires. According to the right hand rule number two, with the current pointing up and the magnetic field pointing out of the page, that means that the magnetic force acting on this wire loop points into the into the loop. Right? And the magnetic force on each of these branches points inward. Now, <clears throat> the magnetic force on the top and bottom wires are equal and opposite because the magnetic field strength there is the same and the direction is opposite so they cancel. So I can ignore the, the magnetic force here and the magnetic force here. <clears throat> All I need to worry about is the magnetic force on the left wire and the right wire. And they're going to differ because the magnetic field over here on the left wire is going to be a little bit stronger. And that means this force over here is going to be a little bit stronger. So the net force acting on this loop is going to push it away from the long straight wire. So let's consider the left wire first. <clears throat> The, uh, the external magnetic field at the location of that wire is mu naught times four and a half, right? That's the current for the long straight wire, divided by two pi r, and in this case, the distance is 0 0.06. So that's 15 times 10 to the minus six Tesla. <clears throat> Therefore, the force acting on the left wire, that's L I B sine 90, um, that's going to be 0.24. Now we use the current of the loop multiplied by the magnetic field that the loop is immersed in, or that wire is immersed in. And that's 7.92 times 10 to the minus 6. <clears throat> and it's directed to the right. Now let's consider the right-hand wire. Uh, the external magnetic field acting on the right-hand wire is mu naught times 4.5 divided by 2 pi. Now this distance is 0.15. So <clears throat> that works out to be uh, 6 times 10 to the minus 6. Somewhat less over here. Okay, It's directed out of the page, just like the magnetic field on the left wire. And so the force acting on the right-hand wire is uh, LIB sine 90. Um, and in this case, the so 0.24 times 2.2. Now the B that we use is this one, the 6 times 10 to the minus 6. <clears throat> so that's 3.17 times 10 to the minus 6 directed to the left. So the total force, if we uh, take our sign convention such that to the right is positive and to the left is negative, which is pretty traditional, then it would be uh, plus the force acting on the left wire minus the force acting on the right wire. So that would be plus 7.92 minus, oops, sorry, plus 7.92 minus 3.14, which is 4.8 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons directed to the right. Okay, and, and the plus x direction. Now, for part B, it says, does the current loop experience any torque? And the answer is no, um, since the, uh, the magnetic field of the loop is, right, the magnetic field of this loop, if you consider the magnetic field of the current loop, uh, it's into the loop, right, on this side. So the magnetic field of the loop is parallel to the external magnetic field.
right? And, and so if we were going to use torque as mu cross b, right, well, theta in this case is zero, the angle between mu and b. Remember, mu is in the direction of the magnetic field of the loop, right? And this b is the external field. And since they're parallel, the sine function is sine 180. I guess I should say that theta is equal to 180, not zero. Sine theta is zero. And so the torque is equal to mu b sine 180, which is zero.